Welcome back to r slash legal advice where people ask questions, get advice and we get satisfaction. If you are new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community and without any further ado let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled Tennessee after 60 years property retailer is claiming they own the mineral rights and will be exercising them. Okay guys, here's a good one for you. Hits a little bit of everything. Tree law, rock law, property sales, legal conflict of interest, ethic complaints, might even do a crappy MS Paint drawing. Located in small town Tennessee, 60 years ago my grandmother bought a piece of undeveloped wooded area about 50 acres in size. Nothing fancy, something to be left to the family when she passes, fast forward to this year. Douchebag Properties DBP is claiming that they own the mineral rights on that piece of dirt and that they are going to be exercising those rights to remove rock off the property for sale. They want us to sign a hold harmless agreement and a bunch of paperwork essentially saying that if anything goes wrong it is not their fault, not their problem and the property owner takes full liability. And they need this contract signed ASAP because they want to get started before the weather turns cold. Basically trying to pull a fast one on a 90 year old grandmother. We did some digging, apparently they do own the mineral rights, future lawsuit incoming, original seller claimed was selling mineral estate and surface estate, title search came back clean. Not sure about the statute of limitations or how the hell these guys got the rights to begin with, so we know we cannot stop them from getting the rocks. Sucks, but lesson learned. Honestly, it is not about the mineral rights, it is more about them coming onto our property, taking what they want and leaving a mess behind for us to deal with. After talking it over with my grandmother, this is what we want to happen before any work is done. Number 1. A full survey of the property done by a land surveyor to determine boundaries that the contractor cannot pass. Number 2. Full survey by an arborist of all trees on the property and an estimate of their value. Any trees that are removed or destroyed must be paid for and replacements planted. All work completed within one calendar year with a daily penalty for any work past that including cleanup and remediation. They really don't want to give us an estimate of when they will complete the work, lots of about a year or when the work gets done. 2 million liability insurance policy on both DBP and the contractor. I don't want to be involved if these a-holes drop a barrel of diesel into the creek bed and the EPA comes knocking or the DOT gets pissed that heavy trucks are tearing up the right of way. After one year all mineral rights transfer back to property owner and DBP never darkens our doorstep again. So because we are dealing with small town southerners where everyone knows everyone else and the concept of outsiders are very much a thing, we found a law firm in a different city slash county that hopefully had no relation to DBP or the contractor they hired to dig the rocks. We bring up our concerns, he says that he has never worked for or done business with either DBP or the contractor, pay his fee and expect him to represent us fairly. But I am starting to get the feeling that this guy is not on the up and up. He tours the property with DBP and the contractor without their lawyers and without telling us, changes nothing about the contract that they want us to sign and is also now really pushing us to get it taken care of ASAP. As in calling and texting multiple times a day saying that it is a good deal and that we need to move fast. First we did not give permission for anyone to be out there without us being notified and on site. I don't know if it is normal for lawyers to do location visits without notifying the owners so maybe that is just on me. It pissed me off, stay off my lawn. Second, it has been 60 years since we came into this land. What is the rush? I'm not going to take the chance on signing something that is not in our best interest without going over it with a effing magnifying glass. After losing faith in this lawyer we reach out to my aunt who is a non-practicing property lawyer in another state. She takes our demands, legalese them up and then forwarded it to our counsel stating that we expect him to work in our best interest not DPBs. That is where we are now so this was part vent slash rant and part question. 
Am I missing something obvious? And am I expecting too much? I know that we most likely will not get everything and if they do own the mineral rights they are going to get the minerals. But I don't want some fast talker taking advantage of my grandma because she is old and an outsider. I also don't want this piece of property to be strip mined out from under us. And here guys you can see the glorious MS Paint painting that OP provided for us. A person in the comments said, mineral rights typically apply to things under the surface of the property. In my honest opinion, there's a good chance that you could argue that surface collecting is not permitted and there's also a good chance that these folks cannot significantly degrade the usable surface of a property you own without reimbursing you or returning it to its original condition. In some states the surface of a property or land rights can be owned separately from the minerals underneath the land and there's a good chance that the value of the trees on the property will be worth more than any bulk rock removed. You need to get a motivated lawyer on this, stat. And another person in the comments said, I do most of my work in Texas but generally the law this far south runs that the mineral deed has to specifically clarify which types of minerals are being removed, anything on the surface is not considered in and under and anything as shallow as less than 200 feet is considered too high up as there's no way to mine it without depleting the surface owner's rights. I'm a bit sketchy on it because nobody has cared about coal and lignite around here in some time and my work is in Texas but as Farah had said it is distinctly possible their mineral rights won't extend to your surface rocks. So guys we have done it, a story that not only has sort of tree law in it but also rock law. This is at least for me a first because we have never had a rock law story before. Either way, if you have watched until here and enjoy my content, please don't forget to like the video and post some star emojis in the comments to show your support. Your help is very much appreciated, thank you so much and now let's continue with the update. Update to the mineral rights story. This is a bit of a two-parter, first part on the subject of rocks. So after a few evenings of Google and I getting to know each other over some very large glasses of scotch, I found more than a few cases that says that this company is pushing to mine the rocks as minerals are full of crap. First what they want to mine is called Dimension Stone and it looks like this. Wow guys, really a beautiful rock, I would definitely get in legal trouble over mining this, very worth it. Second, this rock is not a mineral that falls under mineral rights laws as discussed in Hainman vs Terra Enterprises, the United States District Court in Chattanooga ruled that rock does not constitute a mineral. Substances such as sand, gravel, sandstone and limestone are not minerals within the ordinary meaning of the word unless they are rare and exceptional in character, blah blah blah. While they might own the mineral rights, we are still determining if this is true, those include oil slash gas slash coal etc. Not rocks. Now the a-hole who wants to do the mining texted us that it was his intent to quarry stone out of the property, note that he did not say mine stone out of the property. Mining and quarrying are two very different things in legal circles even if rocks were considered a mineral, State of Tennessee vs La Hare Hill LLC stated that. If the extraction of the substance in question is necessarily so destructive of the mine surface area as to essentially destroy the conveyance of surface rights to that area, then the company does not have the right to perform the proposed extraction at all regardless of whether the substance is a mineral and regardless of whether the extraction method is the usual, necessary and convenient means of removing said mineral. General mineral reservation in a deed will not be construed so broadly as to include extraction methods that destroy the surface rights conveyed in the same deed. If a grantor wishes to retain the right to obtain minerals through destructive surface extraction, he must explicitly reserve that right within the deed, a general mineral reservation will not suffice. So TLDR, rocks are not minerals and even if they were, mineral rights don't count because if you dig them up you destroy the surface and therefore the surface owner's rights. Second part on the subject of the shyster lawyer. 
Now this gets interesting. After a few weeks of total non-communication from the lawyer and more than a few texts from the a-hole trying to query the stone about not needing lawyers involved, it was time to step up our game. One of Grandma Snow's daughters is a non-practicing lawyer in another state. So I call her up, tell her about this lunacy and give her the rundown on the cases that I found during my scotch-fueled Google rage. She tells me that it is hit or miss and that she would not be able to represent us anyway because she's no longer a part of the BAR in Tennessee. But she's willing to look over the cases and get back to me. Two days later she calls me up, tells me that I should have been a lawyer and then sends me a copy of the cease and desist she wrote and overnight it to all the involved parties. Holy crap, I would not want to be on her bad side in a courtroom, trial by combat might be safer. So anyway, Aunt Lawyer sends a copy of the CND to Scheister and said that she has reviewed the timesheet for what we paid him and had some very serious questions in regards to his billing. Specifically his little field trip to the property to meet the miners without prior authorization, his failure to provide all correspondence with the opposition for her records and why he seemed to be on a first name basis with all the other parties on what official correspondence we do have. The shysty lawyer responds back with a threat to report her to the other state BAR for interfering with his client. Now just so we are clear, Aunt Lawyer is Grandma Snow's daughter. I'm not quite sure where he was trying to go with this threat because it's not like she went and started filing things or appearing in court. Aunt Lawyer responds with, I think I can speak to her and speak on her behalf without having to ask you. More drama ensues, lots of legal threats, threats of ethic reports and then nothing. It has been radio silence for the past month, no word from the property retailer, no word from the miner and no word from Shysti. As it is right now, we are assuming that the value of the rocks are just not worth the effort or the legal fight to get them, that might change in the future but as of right now, there is nothing. I finally convinced Grandma Snow to get a trail camera to watch over the entrance of the property, any trespassers will get reported to the police and hopefully that will be the end of this mess. Thanks for everyone who commented on the previous post, I will continue to update if there are any changes. But guys there have been no further updates or changes. So in the end I guess the OP was right, the value of these rocks was just not worth the effort or the legal fight to really get them for the company. And the next one is titled, I am being fired for following company policy. I am currently working from home because the virus, at the beginning of the pandemic our company decided most people should work from home and we could access the on-site resources that we need through the company VPN. A week or so later they sent an email asking us to refrain from using the VPN too much because it was not holding the pressure very well. The new policy was to use the VPN only when necessary and just be on our home network for all the rest. I scrupulously followed this policy because lately I have mostly been working on technical reports and rarely needed to access the specific on-site resources anyway, yesterday I was called in by higher management for a productivity review. I was accused of spending days not working because I didn't use the VPN for days at a time, turns out they reviewed everyone's VPN login history and decided that we were not locked on the VPN, we were not working. From what they said I will probably be terminated for stealing company time. I feel this is particularly unfair since we were asked not to use the VPN when not needed. I met all my deadlines and there wasn't any issue with any client, I probably worked even more hours than before because I didn't waste time commuting. Since I have started at this company 12 years ago, my performance reviews have always gone very well and I've been promoted regularly. I have talked to colleagues and there are 5 of us in the same situation, we are all over 40 and with high salaries. I think this is a covert way to eliminate expensive employees from the payroll. Do I have any recourse? Would it be considered wrongful termination? And a user in the comments said, firing you for not using the VPN enough after having been instructed not to use the VPN is perfectly legal. 
firing you because you are over 40 and pretending that the reason is because you were not using the VPN is not legal. The hitch is that it is difficult to prove which of these happened if it happened at the same time to several people in an older age bracket that is suggestive. If it also did not happen to several people in a younger age bracket who made similar use of the VPN that is a case you might well be able to win. Because this sort of case is so very dependent on the particulars of your case and the evidence available, my best advice would be to go in with a couple of others in your age bracket who were laid off and consult an attorney specializing in labor slash employment law to ask what they think of your chances. If you intend to go down that road, I would avoid saying much of anything to your employer until after consulting with the lawyer. By the way guys, I'm wondering how many of my RIPE stars frequently use a VPN? Since some sites are blocked in Thailand, I frequently actually use a VPN, it is called TorGuard and no, I'm not getting any money for promoting it, I'm just saying this is a very good VPN if you are looking for one. And by the way, no, it has nothing to do with the Tor browser. Update to the fired for following company policy story. My colleagues and I were pressured into resigning and again accused of time theft. One of my colleagues did resign but the rest of us decided we would consult an employment lawyer instead. Our employer got wind of that somehow, I suppose one of my colleagues couldn't keep their mouth shut but it was not necessarily a bad thing because they changed their tune completely. We were told that the company doesn't need us anymore, which means we are still losing our jobs but we are not fired for cause, no accusations of time theft. The VPN thing is now a lack of communication between departments. I was offered a decent severance package, I don't know about the others but I think they got it too, that is something at least, I think it still could be argued that there is age discrimination at play here but I'm not sure if it is a fight worth fighting. Actually, I have reasons to suspect that the company is not doing well at all, time to dust off that resume I guess. And guys as usual, even though there is a resolution to this story, but sometimes the resolution is not really a fair one. That is just how legal advice can be sometimes. And the last one is titled California USA woman boarding my dog keeps adding charges and we are at a stalemate on signing a contract. So a little background first I suppose, due to a failed marriage I solely own two wonderful dogs, unfortunately due to my career in the military I was soon deployed again for the last time and was unable to bring them with me. My ex and I found boarders through an organization called Dogs on Deployment. My older dog was placed in a home with a wonderful family and it has gone extremely well. My two year old husky on the other hand has gone to a woman that I honestly feel is working a long scam. Two months went by without incident before she began saying he was showing aggression to her two dogs. She asked for me to pay for professional training which I did. She has yet to bring the dog to training, now stating she wants an indemnity agreement which absolved her of all liability and if she gets sued she gets to choose her lawyer and I would pay. I asked if we could just sign the generic DOD contract which my ex who dropped him off never mentioned to her, she now wants me to pay for a lawyer to look it over on her behalf. This just does not sit right to me. I have already paid for a vet visit for her other dog as she said they got into it. I never had a problem when it was just my two dogs but it seems any claim would be her word against mine. I honestly just want to make it back from this 9 months deployment and finally settle somewhere with my dogs, both of them, but every day she has a new issue. If this doesn't work out I fear I will have to contact a rescue because in the end his happiness is what matters. Does this seem to be a scam to anyone else or am I just crazy? Update, thank you everyone for the advice and kind offers. I truly hope everything works out for my dog. The border wanted me to pay for a lawyer for her and when I said no, she got personal. She tried to research how much I make and said I could afford what she was asking but I was being selfish. She now wants dog removed from her home immediately. Fingers crossed this gets resolved quickly as this has become a giant ball of stress I just don't want to deal with. 
And a user in the comments said, he's getting picked up tonight and brought to Sacramento. I cannot keep him until April, so if anyone can, we would appreciate it. He would be safe and away from the crazy person tonight. It amazes me what can happen on social media. And another person said, you are awesome. Do you get any sense of the aggressive behavior or is he perfectly normal for a young husky? The poor guy must wonder what on earth is going on. Glad you are there for him. Update to the dog story. So much has happened in the last few days and it has completely restored my faith in humanity. So many kind people reached out to me after seeing my post, I cannot even begin to express my gratitude. I came here for some I am not a lawyer legal advice but ended up with a user orchestrating a puppy rescue in the nick of time. The last two weeks have been a constant battle between the woman who had my dog and me. Every time I heard the email notification go off on my phone, my stress level jumped. Within 24 hours, Reddit and the Facebook group North American Siberian Husky changed that. My husky is currently safe and happy, surrounded by people that truly care about his happiness. Without the support of people like you, Reddit, I don't know what I would have done. Two users in the comments offered to open their home to a dog that had been labeled aggressive by his last border. Both of you were willing to expose your family and yourselves and I will never be able to repay your kindness. That user in the comments and her family currently have my dog. They have gone above and beyond anything I could have hoped for. Their kindness has brought me to tears. If more people were like them, I would be out of a job. And guys, unfortunately, we have already reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. And if you haven't already, please also go to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube, where I upload exclusive Reddit videos starting at just $3 a month. This is a great way to support me in case you are interested and the chance for me to become independent from YouTube revenue. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I hope to see you again tomorrow.